Hello and welcome to the first of many CCNA videos for the Cisco Certified Network Associate course with the exam code 20301. The exam was released by Cisco in February 2020 and this is a free course for you, the community, to use in order to pass your certification. Now it's worth noting that even though this course will obviously cover it as much as it can, it's very, very important you use multiple resources. Make sure you use books and other videos from other vendors in order to get a broad view of all the technologies required in your exam. The first video will be the introduction to the CCNA. This is a non-technical video focusing on how the course is structured, who's the course is for, and how to get most out of the course. The first technical video will be based on the networking components on devices, switches, routers, and so forth. So for those who are not interested in the non-technical topics, skip this video. For those that want to stay around and understand more about the CCNA and this course in general, stay tuned as we get started. Hello and welcome to the first of many CCNA videos covering the latest Cisco Certified Network Associate exam from Cisco with the exam code 20301. This is the non-technical and optional introduction that will go over who this course is for and how you should use this course along with a few tips. And for those who don't know, you can contact me on Twitter, here on YouTube, Facebook or LinkedIn. All the details will be in the description below. If you think this video and video series is useful, please like, subscribe and support so I can continue to make more of these for you. So let's go make a start. So who is the course for? That's the first question. And the answer to that is anyone in networking and IT in general, really. And the CCNA is referred to as kind of the entry level certification into the world of networking. Over the time, it's become more complex and more difficult. And some would say it's become easier. It all varies on opinion and experience. I think it's become more broad, especially with the latest uh, exam blueprint. It kind of reminds you quite a bit of the CompTIA M+. The M+, was very broad. The CCNA was very in-depth. That's kind of the way it used to be between them, but they kind of both seem to go down the, the broad route. I think that's great. It's important that we understand a lot of the basics because if you get the exposure now, you know which path to specialize in as you move down your career. And it also means as a entry level and junior engineer in the world of networking, you have a broader spectrum and a broader understanding of the possibilities. So I think it is a, it's a good move from Cisco. The world of IT, when I mean this, is regarding kind of system admins, VM admins. A lot of these engineers require more and more networking, especially when some of the networking capabilities are being pushed into things like VMware. So because of that, they may be kind of interested in learning and developing their networking skills and obtaining a, a CCNA would be a good, good option for them. So that's who it's for. So this is also really important note. Um, I say this all the time and it's to use other resources. Don't just also use videos. Videos is how I personally learn. That's how I have learned lots of my material. But after learning it and understanding the, the actual basics and overviews, I always look at the books because the books gives you all the details that necessarily won't be in the video. I use the videos to understand the concept and I use books to get the details. And then once I've done both of these or during, I ensure that I lab every technology. And we'll get into how you can lab stuff as the course moves on. It's also important to not wait around. So if I have a delay on producing the videos or you're watching someone's videos and they don't produce them as quick enough or you're waiting for CBT Nuggets or you're waiting for IE or you're waiting for Cisco Press, don't forget all this information that you need to pass your CCNA is already out there on the Cisco website. There's loads and loads of content on the Cisco website. So while you're there waiting for understanding how VLANs could work, you could go and read the configuration documentation. So don't wait around, get on with it, learning it, use as much resource as you can. And the importance of using different resources is everyone will explain the technologies in different ways. And long as you understand it one way or another, then you're able to move on quicker in your career. The amount of times I've kind of read a book and not understood what the author was trying to explain, and then you kind of get lost and frustrated that you don't understand it. But then I go off and I watch a video on the topic, I fully understand it, I come back, 
I read it again and it wasn't it wasn't the author it's obviously me not following the way he explains it or she explains it so it's important that you use different resources and explore different uh, avenues rather than just use the one it won't happen overnight and that's really important to know because well let me just explain a bit better when i say it won't happen overnight what i mean by that is when i was doing the icnd1 and csen series a lot of people messaged me and said how long will it take me to pass this exam? And the answer to that is it varies. It varies based on your experience and how much time you have to actually put into learning these topics and understanding them. And also it depends on, of course, how you learn as an individual, whether you're better through books, videos and labs. All of this determines how long it will take you. I've seen engineers with 10 years of experience, haven't even opened a Cisco book and was able to pass the exam. And I've seen people with five years of system administration experience, part of networking, and only took a week or two to pass their exam. And on the other scale of that, I've seen people take a year or two to pass the exam. So we all have commitments and it's about understanding how much time you need to commit to the CCNA. And part of that is really looking at how much you know now, how much you don't know, and putting together a plan in order to put a routine in place in order to pass it. If you want it in a month, two months, three months time, then put a routine where you're gonna study every day or every other day for this much time in these topics, and this is how you're gonna revise it, and this is how you're gonna lab it, and stick to it, because that is the biggest challenge. Sticking to that routine and sticking to that uh, studying pattern is the hardest challenge of all, and that's why it takes longer than normal for most people to pass the exam. Just wanted to take a step out and explain why, when I say it won't happen overnight, what I actually mean by that. And the last point, it's free and will always be free for the community to enjoy the free uh, videos that come along with my channel. So now what? Let's have a discussion about a few things. First of all, what about everything that you've learned? And what do I mean by this? Well, quite a few of you are no doubt were looking at doing the CSEN or maybe you were doing the second part of the ICN D2. And then all of a sudden the new CCNA comes out and half this is no longer relevant. Well, first of all, it's not half. <laughs> it's actually, uh, you know, even though it is the biggest uh, change in Cisco certifications, a lot of it is still very relevant. Everything you learn in the CSENT and, CC and ICND2 is still going to hold true either in the exam, future courses, or in your day to day life as a network engineer. Only because Cisco has taken out his exam doesn't mean that it's, no, it's, it's now relevant. It's not. Technology takes a long time to, to churn, at least it does nowadays. I'm sure that will become a lot quicker as time moves on. But for now, it's the case of understanding that what you've done has not been wasted and you should continue with doing so. Now, the reason Cisco has removed a lot and added a lot of new content for this new CCNA is mainly because they need to keep up with market trends and the industry as a whole. And as we know, things like STN, Software Defined Networking, is very popular, has been for the last few years, and that's taken more and more time, more traction in the world of networking, and Cisco needs to address it with their certifications. So they've started to do that now, but it doesn't mean that the stuff they've taken away is now relevant. It's not. You will use it. That I can promise. So make a plan and stick with it. This is extremely important. I always tend to uh, make a plan and review what I'm going to do. So which videos am I going to watch? Which chapter, which book am I going to read? Or how am I going to lab some technologies together in order to achieve an outcome? I do this in order to keep track of not what I have to do, but what I've actually done. And the difference there being is if I keep looking at what I've done, it motivates me to continue. Because if I keep looking at what I have to do, all I see is this big list of topics and it kind of makes you look at it and think, I'm never going to get there in time. But when I start looking at everything that I've finished, it motivates me to go and tackle these topics because I know I've already made a good start. So make a plan, keep going, keep motivated as you continue through. Because again, it won't happen overnight. Now, repetition is key. And repetition is, is key for many reasons. And it can be also kind of misleading too. Because when you think of topics like VLANs, for example, 
For now, you might remember what a VLAN is and you might remember the VLAN range and you might remember how to configure a VLAN and the different types of kind of VLANs and how to configure the ports. And then all of a sudden, over time, maybe you forget this and maybe you forget this. And then eventually you forget enough to fail in the exam. So going over it, repeat it, continuous, continuous and continuous through that repetition process will help cement it in your long-term memory so you don't forget it. And then eventually you'll be able to get to the point where you do remember everything there is to remember about VLANs. Now you don't need to remember obviously everything and be able to teach it, but you certainly need to be able to understand a lot of the topics that you better recall it during your exam in order to of course pass. What you need to also think about is the actual blueprint. You should go and have a look at the blueprint and review all of the topics. What I tend to do is have a checklist, sort of green, yellow, orange, and red, where red is something I've never heard of before. Orange is something that you know, I've heard of, but haven't really looked into. Yellow, maybe I've configured it once or twice or read about it, but don't fully understand it. And green is I'm exam ready. And I do this against all of the topics that are against the blueprint in order for me to understand where I am and how much work I have to do in order to obtain my Cisco qualification. So go do that and review the topics. Now I'm not gonna look at the blueprint in this video. And the reason I'm not gonna look at the blueprint in this video is because there's plenty of videos already out there reviewing the topics in detail and comparing it with previous exams. And I will pop them in the description. For now, I just wanna say the blueprint is on the Cisco website. Go review it, understand it. This video of course will go through the blueprint from top to bottom in a logical order or try to anyway because there are some things that kind of you won't teach in the blueprint order but I will try and outline the bits that I'm doing in which order and why. So that's all we've got time for in this video. It was just kind of like I said a non-technical introduction to kind of go over some of the key points. So we know who this is for. It's for anyone looking to get their CCNA but kind of any IT professional, not just networking. It's important that you plan out your, uh, your task and how you're going to achieve your CCNA and that you go through all the course and you repeat it with different resources, through books, through videos, and of course, the key thing being repetition. And then we talked about general tips. Go look at that blueprint, go write a list of all the things that you know and all the things you don't know, and then tackle it one by one. Try to focus on what you've completed and not what you've got to do to stay positive and motivated to continue. Have a think also of how much time you can actually spend studying. Because in order to kind of make a plan, you need to think about how long you have. So think about that. So for those who don't know, you can contact me on Twitter, here on YouTube, Facebook, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And other than that, I hope this video has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.